Yeah, what happened was uh, it was right before entering our building. I'd gone to, to pick my children. And uh, coming, I just found by the corner, I found a group of, uh, of people who greeted me in, in Zulu. And normally, we don't speak Zulu. So I answered, uh, I said, what are you saying? So immediately, they said, they started speaking in their language. And next, uh, they started uh, harassing me. So we were actually fighting. And uh, they were cutting uh, sticks. The boy I, I was with got, uh, got cut here. So I had a, a blow here. Now immediately I didn't develop uh, any problem, but slowly I remained with pain until today it got very worse. So I was taken to the hospital. Jumped. First of all, they, they jumped the walls into the, the compound and uh, began to shout, where are Kwere Kwere's? But it was all in Zulu. I don't know Zulu, but we can just understand that uh, the word Kwere 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 was repeatedly said, so we could understand it was targeted to uh, the foreigners. <laughs> paper we are being given by the South African government for refugees doesn't have credibility. Yeah, they give you a paper which, which is renewable after three months. And you've been having that paper for the past three years, four years. There are people who have been having that paper for five years and no uh, refugee status. It has never been safe, but it's just a, a position whereby you don't have a choice. Because you should understand you are not in your country and you are caught up with a, a very clumsy paper of identity and uh, you feel suspended in the air not knowing what future is holding for you. And that's the worst torture. It's whereby you can't plan, you don't know what is going to happen to you next. We're here where we have our toilets, but you can see we have only 10 boxes here for all the flock of people you saw there. And there is no difference between women or men because all of us, we're supposed to come here. And the toilets, if I open, they are very dirty. We are almost 4,000 people here. And 10 boxes of toilets, it's not enough. But we don't have shower rooms here. So we're supposed to stay dirty, sweat, and uh, all that compiled, you can imagine what kind of smell we can have at the end of the day. This is likely to give rise to epidemic among us here. I believe some even are getting sick. And there are kids who, who need special care. There are pregnant women there, and there is nothing special done to them. And you know pregnant women need special care. Uh, and, uh, and the government, we don't see what the government is doing. Some of those people, uh, red ants, how they, that's how they call them, they, they do call us query query. So you see, it's exactly the same words which was used outside to chase, to chase foreigners. And it's the same being used inside by those who are supposed to protect us. And that's very uh, indicative because we feel that anytime these people can also allow those who attacked us 
to come again and do the same thing. You, if you woke up to go or just release a bit, you find them sleeping like you. So they're doing nothing. It's, it's a real problem. Moving us from here to another camp is simply a move prepared to make us uh, to make it look as though the government has contained the situation and everything is fine. It's not even uh, with our cooperation. I believe we have a lot, a lot more space here, and it's a, uh, it's better than when we were. But then we have. Uh, a concern that side because we have a hostel exactly where people who, who attacked us are. They promised us water, and uh, there is water. Uh, there, there is no water yet, but we see uh, there are guys there working. We expected to have also electricity. There are electricity guys who are working there, and uh, there is a concern. We have a mine dump there. We don't know what, what's in in the dump there because it might be a danger for the people who are going to be living here. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, well, you know what we have achieved today, um, at least for the first time. Uh, like yesterday, we had complaints of uh, young people saying we are not being saved food because we don't have families and women are given more than enough and some people are getting more than enough. Now, I thought in the meeting, I thought we should devise a method which can at least allow us to have everybody having access to whatever food is there. That's why we had to create the, those two lines and we made sure that nobody comes from the side. As African, we are one. It's one land, one people, regardless of uh, the borders. These are artificial things. But in fact, the people is one. We, we, and we, we obliged to be together. And together, it's a big nation. Scattered, it's something weak that can, you know, disappear anytime. Mad! 
Matza. A leader is supposed to do what he said, to accomplish what he promised. And in Africa, that seems to, to lack everywhere. You want the place to be clean? Yeah. yeah. We don't want people to get sick, so the, the spot must be clean. There was a commitment given by the uh, MEC that was responsible for the development of this camp that the camp would be in place for two months, so that would be to the end of July, and after the end of July we're told it will be dismantled. Whether the respective parties will be able to attend to the reintegration and or submission of the nationals back to their homes of origin is a question that we are really liking to see answered and obviously the community would like to see that that commitment of the two months is really upheld. Some of them say they've lost their documents, including the documents that show that uh, they are asylum seekers. So we're saying all of them register so that uh, you have six months to reorganize yourself. Within these six months, nobody will deport you and so on. Uh, and that includes the, those asylum seekers who may not have documents to show that they are indeed asylum seekers. What is important here to note is that uh, we're given that paper uh, which is supposed to be me uh, temporal. But uh, that paper ha happens to, to remain for four, five years. A person is still keeping a paper which was supposed to last only three months. And uh, from that you're given a, a status. These people, the government officials, are not handling this thing properly. And uh, at this point, I don't see why we should uh, go for any reintegration process. I believe what we need is uh, international protection. I've been involved with this uh, crisis since uh, the 20th of May. People are suspicious that what's going to happen is that if they participate in this registration, they will be given a temporary document and then the process of reintegration will be deemed to have taken place. But they argue that they are here for safety, not for documents. What happened today in the morning is a shame. You could see men, policemen, handling roughly women, even threatening, they even shot bullets. And because this is just the beginning, we have just begun. So there is no real reason to ask people back into the community. The fears are real. 
and the, the authorities know it. The very day we came in here, even the members of the communities were telling us to go home. It started la two, two days back. We started having some suspicious presence, some uh, unusual presence in the camp. People who visibly were not security officers. And yesterday there were more. There were six, six of them. They had weapons, fire weapons. And one of them was uh, quite clear in his speech saying that we are here on a mission and we have to deal with uh, at least 16 people. And we know that it's, uh, you know, mainly the peace marshals, the leaders, the representatives of the nations who are targeted at. People have been at rifle range for six weeks now, and we've had a steady breakdown of communication. The peace marshals are now being uh, uh, seen as a problem in this process. They're, they've, they're seen as being a leadership that is only interested in their own um, in their own agendas and that they are manipulating the people here. We heard that they are going to close down all the camps, but it doesn't make sense when they haven't found any solution for the people living in the camp. It doesn't make sense. Eviction is not a possibility, I believe. If they try to be human, if they at least can try to be human, because they will be doing exactly what the citizens of South Africa have done to the foreigners. We are now taking all those who did not cooperate with us to Lindela. And then we're going to process them there. And then all those who come with documents, undocumented migrants will be deported back to the country. Then those who have documents will leave it up to them to decide what they want to do. But definitely they're not coming back to the ship. This message should go on an international level. It shall not be kept on the, lo the local level. It needs to be sent out to international level because this is an SOS, saving of soul. If it's done very late and if souls are gone, it's of no use opening cases because lives will have gone already.